An increasing number of birders are recording audio of bird sounds on their phones and uploading to eBird. A lot of the uploaded audio on eBird is of poor quality because many people don't know how to edit the audio for best results. I'm going to try to show you the ropes on that. To edit audio, you need software on your PC. I think probably the most popular program for editing bird sound audio is Audacity. Audacity is a free download available for both Windows and Mac and Linux. I'll post the download link or you can just search for Audacity download. A um, couple of preliminary things, a pointer about file format. Um, if you can, set your recording app to record in WAV format, W-A-V, which is what both eBird and Audacity prefer. A lot of audio files that I've had sent to me are in M4A format, and to work with that in Audacity, you'll need to download an add-on. I'm not going to cover installing the add-on here. Also, it's best to record in mono rather than stereo if you have that option. There's no advantage to stereo, and it just makes your files twice as big. Once you have a recording that you want to work with, you'll need to get it from your phone to your PC, and I'm also not going to cover that here. I'm going to assume that you have a file already on your PC. Um, in Audacity, uh, you can open files through a pretty traditional file open dialog. I actually often just use uh, drag and drop. But anyway, I have a, a file already open that I'm going to be working with. There are two things that eBird uh, really wants you to do with every recording, and a third thing that they say that you can do optionally. So I'm going to cover those three things first. Uh, the first thing is that you should trim any um, excess recording from the beginning or end of your clip. Often when you make a recording in the field, uh, the bird doesn't start singing right away, so you have uh, just blank dead air at the beginning of the recording, simple background sound. And, and likewise, the bird may stop singing before you stop recording, so you have dead air at the end of your recording. So all of that empty non-bird background sound at the beginning or end, you should trim off so that what you upload is just the bird sound. They recommend that you have a three second lead in. In other words, the bird sound should begin at three seconds into the clip and uh, likewise a three second trailer at the end. The, the clip should end three seconds after the last bird sound. Now often, as in this example that I'm going to be working with, the bird sings so much that you don't really have those three second gaps to work with. But anyway, never have more than three seconds of uh, background at the beginning or end of the recording. So I'm going to demonstrate the trimming, uh, but not for that exact reason. Uh, first, I'll play through this uh, recording. <laughs> This recording is actually cleaner to begin with than a lot of my recordings are, but there's a lot of wind noise. There's this big click. And then more wind noise that's unpleasant to listen to. I moved behind the shelter of my car out of the wind, and the rest of the recording is pretty clean. But you'll notice that it's a very low amplitude. The actual sound wave is just little blips around the baseline. Over here, where it looks like there's a lot more going on, that's actually just noise that we'd like to get rid of. Um, so I'm going to shorten this for purposes of the tutorial. To, and to demonstrate uh, trimming. Uh, one thing I might do is just to, uh, to keep the part of the recording over here that's more clean and, and discard the, the less pleasing part of the recording over here. I'm actually gonna do the opposite of that. I'm gonna discard the better part of the recording and only work with this part over here, uh, the more challenging part, just to show what you can do. So I'm gonna split the recording right there and uh, 
to make a deletion, you first have to select the part that you're going to delete. And you can do that either by dragging the mouse across it, or what I usually do is uh, place the uh, cut point and then use the keyboard sh shortcut Shift K, which automatically selects from that point to the end. And then to delete, you just press the delete key. Similarly, you could do a deletion at the beginning by uh, positioning the cursor and hitting, pressing Shift J to select back to the beginning. Uh, but I'm not actually going to do that deletion. Now, having done the deletion, we're not really making good use of the full width of the display. So now I'm going to click this um, Fit Project to Width button. By project, they mean the recording. So this is fitting the recording to the width of the window. So that's trimming. Um, the, the second thing um, that they want you to do is normalization. And uh, from experience, I know that normalization isn't going to do any good at this point. So I'm going to skip that for now and come back to it later. And move on to the third thing, which has to do with removing some of that background noise. And for that, we use a different view of the recording. If you click on this little downward pointing triangle over here, you get the open menu. And one thing that has are three different views that you can have of your recording. We're using the waveform view right now, which is a, a picture of the actual sound wave. Waveform DB, I haven't even figured out what that's for. I never use it. But I did use the third view, the spectrogram view, which is a, a sonogram that you're probably familiar with, plotting frequency against time. And we can uh, let me stretch it out a little bit to make the frequency scale bigger. So you see that the these are the bird sounds here. This is the Dixisle and this is the Meadowlark. The bird sounds that we're all interested in are at about 2.5 kilohertz or higher. And on that wind noise is at very low frequency, below one kilohertz, mostly below 500 hertz down here at the bottom. And it's very loud. It's it sounds the this white white color level is the highest intensity sound. So there's so there's quite a separation between the sounds that we want and the sounds that we don't want, and we can take advantage of that separation to filter out uh, the sound that we don't want using what's called uh, high pass filtering. So to filter, we have to select. Uh, the whole uh, recording and uh, selection changes the color scheme. And uh, then we go to the effect menu. And there are lots of effects. The effect that we want is high pass filter. There's also low pass filter. Don't confuse them. High pass filter passes through or keeps high frequencies and discards low frequencies. Now eBird is ultra conservative about making any change to the actual sound. So they say if you really have to do a high pass filtering, you can do it at 250 hertz and no more. So if we do that, we'll see that a lot of that uh, low frequency sound disappears, but not all of it. There's still quite a bit left there. If we, now, if we go back and look at our uh, waveform again, we'll see it looks completely different. The, all of that high amplitude noise is gone. And it sounds a lot better, but there's still significant wind noise. Now, this is one place where I depart from eBird philosophy. I, I think they're much too conservative about um, um, filtering. Uh, there's such a wide separation between the sounds that we want and the sounds that we don't want that we can be much more aggressive about uh, high pass filtering. So they say uh, 250, I might use 1250. And you see that gets rid of even more of this low frequency sound, but there's still quite a bit left over here. So I'm going to go even higher. I'm going to go up to uh, 2,000, 2 kilohertz. So now we've really pretty much wiped out 
low frequency sounds and we haven't done any harm at all to the high frequency sounds that we want. Um, so now our waveform looks even cleaner. And um, it sounds better. So now we can uh, go back and address normalization. Now I said that uh, normalization works with the loudest sound, and, and now it's even more clear that this click is the loudest sound. So we need to get that click out of there before we can really do anything more. And uh, by the way, this is actually an artificial click that I put in here for demonstration, but sometimes you really do get clicks like this in your recording. To eliminate this click, I'm going to use the zoom tool up here and zoom in on it. And then I'll switch to the selection tool to select it. And then I'll click on silence audio selection to just get rid of it. Now, um, if you look at the time scale up here, we're talking about a few ten thousandths of a second. So you're never going to hear this little blip in here when you play the uh, recording through. So now we have a recording that's of fairly uniform but low amplitude. And this is where normalization comes into play. So we select, click select, and go to the effects menu and choose normalize. You don't really need to know what these settings mean. You just need to know that eBird recommends minus three decibels. So that's what we we'll use. And when we click that, it expands the amplitude of the recording. So now we have a much louder recording to listen to. Now, there's one more thing that I sometimes do, not always, uh, probably wouldn't do it on this recording, but I'm going to demonstrate it anyway. And that is uh, noise reduction. Now, noise reduction has even more potential to mess up your uh, recording, so we use it very judiciously and with great care when you do use it. Uh, uh, for noise, to do noise reduction, we first identify a little snippet of the recording that we're going to call noise. Make sure that this is, and I'll, I'll play it back to confirm that this is just background noise here. We want to be sure that there's no bird sound in that selection. Then we go back to the effects menu and choose noise reduction. This is a two-step operation and the first step is called get noise profile and what that does is register this selection with audacity. So it now knows that this sound that we've selected is what we're identifying as noise. Then we go back to selecting the whole thing and go back to noise reduction a second time and do step two, which uh, actually does the noise reduction. Now if you look at this little section in here where we essentially consider that a silent section that's in between bird sounds, you still, still see that there's sound wave in there. And when we click noise reduction, all of that pretty much disappears. You've just got a flat line there. And so now we have a really quiet sounding recording. And if you didn't hear it 
in many of the earlier samples. Maybe you uh, heard the grasshopper sparrow a few times in the background there if it made it through YouTube and all. Now we're ready to save the file. And um, oh, first, if, if this were, this is a mono recording, so there's only one track. If it were stereo, you'd see another copy of the track down below here uh, as, the, as the stereo track. Um, so before saving it, we go back to the open menu and there's a thing down here that says split stereo to mono. Uh, that's a really odd way of saying it, but what that means is if you click that, if you have stereo and you click that, then when you save the file, it will merge the two tracks into one mono track. Um, then you save it under the file menu and they don't actually call it saving, they call it export. So you can export the sound and you can export it to a few different formats. We want to export as WAV for eBird. And then that's uh, a pretty standard uh, saving kind of dialogue that comes up. You can uh, modify the, the, the file name to your preference if you like. Um, And uh, to save it, you can put in some metadata if you want. Click OK, and you're done, ready to upload to eBird.